What's up everybody, welcome to the life of a board gamer. My name is Daniel and in my never ending quest to review all the Valeria games, which one day I will definitely do because I just love all of their games. It's like they're printing money. And today we are checking out the newest one, Guild Academies of Valeria. Uh, this one is uh, uh, set in a, if you watched me and Slavin the gameplay of the normal Valeria game, uh, the card kingdoms of Valeria. If you watched our gameplay campaign, like we managed to save the Aquila and all that, uh, I'm really bad at storytelling in the, what these games are about. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Stay with me. So in this one, it's time of the peace. Everything is cool. Nobody is attacking. Uh, we already went through Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria and uh, all of that, you know, uh, while they are preparing for the battle to attack us again. Uh, we are now Guild Masters and we have our academies and we are trying to like educate new Valerians, new mages, new Archmages or whatever for the upcoming evil, if it comes, you know, we hope it's not coming, but if it comes, we're going to hope uh, that we are going to defeat it. So... Today we are doing this, that exactly. We are, we are reviewing a game that's uh, all about that. So I hope that intro was kind of good for you. I don't know. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let me show you what you get inside this box and uh, let me tell you why I like it. Okay, so Guild Academies has a huge board. I hope it will fit on the screen and I think it will. So as you can see, it is a huge board. Again, it has a lot of custom dice uh, that will come on these docks. And basically each turn you will send your workers on one of those three docks. Because four, there's four docks, but you only have three workers. So there's always one action that you are not going to be able to activate. And you are going to go on these docks. You are going to collect some dice. And over here you will, uh, influence, in, you will put influence on some of these uh, scholars or however they are called right now. I can't remember and you will try to put some influence on them, put your flags, they will give you some discounts or make some of your dice work as wild. Over here you will have some tokens that I'm gonna show you in a second also over here. And uh, on all the, all the two sides, like over here and on these two sides, you will have some extra buildings that you're going to be purchasing and putting, you are going to like build like Carcassonne, like your little city, sort of. So yeah, that's the board and a lot. it looks like a lot, but the game is really straightforward. There's not lots of questions going on. So basically, as I said, you are going to be buying buildings. There are three types of buildings. There's these gray ones. These are like lower tier buildings. And as you can see, they have some like something on the edges. That means once you manage to uh, put them that so that they make like a full circle, you will get one of these tokens, put it in that circle and you can use it whenever you want. And these will actually bring, give you either like a one-time ability or they will give you uh, something for the end game scoring or stuff like that. Basically, they will give you some points. So that's that. And uh, as I said, those are like the lower tier buildings that you can have in your city. And there's the green ones. These, there's a lot of them because you will mostly go for these because they have two symbols on them. Sometimes they have one, but usually they have two symbols on them. And that means that they, they will also score you more points by the end of the game if you play it good. And uh, over here, what it says is what are the requirements so your die so you can earn some prestige and so your can die your dice can uh, like advance on a bigger number that represents them learning becoming more and more uh, smarter so to say. And once they graduate, they will go on a quest and they will earn you bring you some points and stuff like that. So basically this one says you need to send the schooler of the, with the orange color and one orange die and one blue die. doesn't matter what, what number is. And you will get to uh, put uh, two experience points that you can spend on these dice to advance them the num to, to higher numbers. You will get some gold, some victory points. And that's what these buildings do. And of course the gray ones also do that, but they usually don't require these schoolers to be here. They, you can just send freely dice and nothing else. And the last buildings that you are going to build throughout the game are these purple ones. And they're really hard to come by. You will end up with maybe three of these, two or three of these. And those are all end game scoring. They will give you all kinds of different end game scoring possibilities. And uh, depending what you played, uh, so 
uh, this is like uh, these are this is for a solo game I just might even play solo uh, leave me a comment down below if you want to see me playing this game solo I can't promise but if I see lots of comments I mean why not if you want to see it you will get the first player marker and a round tracker nothing like particular each player will get a uh, lots of components in their colors flags those guys that you are going to send some some torches that you will mark those uh, quest that you are going to go on and these quests are actually these cards and there should be more cards where are they are these all oh yeah these are the quests and these are some extra quests to give you a little bit variety they came in a box i don't know if this is the kickstarter version i think it is so i'm not sure if you maybe get some of this stuff or not but uh so yeah basically uh these quests will require some type of dice to have and you will just go send those dice as they graduate they will go there they cannot go if they didn't graduate and once they graduate once uh, they go on a quest they will bring you some extra points and stuff and as i said you will get a bunch of you will get these tokens throughout the game that you can uh, easily uh, trade for really good stuff like these like small prizes uh, i really like that they included uh, like everything you can do and how your turn structure is working and all of that what the all the iconography is what each player has so you can constantly look at this if you see some icon and maybe if the pearl you don't know what that icon means because you didn't learn the game you were taught the game and maybe the the person who knows how to play the game is just right it's there in the middle of their turn you can check it over here maybe deduce it yourself it's really nice cheat sheet i like it and they are cardboard for some strange reason but i love it that it's cardboard uh, so yeah each of the player will get uh, a board in two parts why is this in two parts is beyond me i maybe they will change something in the future i don't know but because it fits in a box perfectly you know it's not too big for the box it could have been just one of these but they decided to go with this puzzle thing but yeah basically you have already two buildings that you are starting with and you will start with one green building of random choosing and over here you will keep your dice and if you don't have you don't want to have lots of dice over here because you want to send them to schools to learn because then you get all these points and over here you will track your mana and your coin that goes all up to 20 and uh, the last thing that you get are these coolers as i said you get a bunch of these coolers in different colors and you will need to draft them from those docks that i showed you and uh, as you draft them you will have them in your area to send them to help new dice learn and of course as almost each valeria game you get a bunch of dice not all of the valeria games but when you get valeria game with dice you get a bunch of custom dice and these dice are basically your uh, little uh, empty minds that you are trying to fill with learning and knowledge and and uh, want them to graduate and uh, be the best they can be so yeah basically that is what you get in this game and i must say that they did it again i um i still have to play a game from valeria universe that i dislike or that i had not fun with uh some of them are like super awesome some of them are awesome but i really enjoyed played any of their games i never played a game that has valeria in its name and that i didn't have fun with i don't know how they are doing that but they are doing it and that's it <laughs> that's all i can say so um what I like most about this game is that it gives you a lot, but you can't do anything. Now, uh, very early in the game, you figure out uh, if you want to like influence those uh, guys on the main board, those green and purple guys. The purple guys are in-game scoring guys, and you can move your flags only that many times. Usually, you need to pay to move it, which is pretty expensive because you want to spend your money elsewhere on better stuff. So, you really figure out... I mean, as long as the, the this... Uh, this flag is is on a guy that's giving you like uh, some extra benefit like all of your blue dice are wild color or something like that that's really cool but you really want to end game scoring that's where the points are at the end game so you really want to progress over there but it's really hard you know to send them all over there because you have three of those flags and you have to like you have only four turns so the game is really tight that's what i'm trying to say i was thinking about the word how to describe this game the game is really tight but at the same time it's really fun trying to figure out uh, all the combos that you can get with those buildings and some of these end game scoring buildings will give you 
points depending how you, how your buildings are arranged and you can't change the arrangement once you put them over there so you kind of have to plan in advance a little bit there is one opportunity in the entire game where you can switch two buildings and you have to make that matter otherwise uh, you are going to maybe lose lots of points I mean, not, not lose lots of points, but you can get lots of points. If you do a smart switch, if you put them in the right place, you can score yourself a lots of points. That's what I did actually in my game when I played it. So yeah, overall, it's a nice game where you have a little bit of everything. You have cards, you have drafting, you have quests, you have, you have city building stuff going on. Uh, you have this uh, manipulation with the dice. You are trying to figure out how all of this works. You are always lacking something because you uh, miscalculated. In this game, it's really, really important to be prepared, to be really, really prepared. Uh, usually what it happened to me was I like, oh my God, I have too many dice that I can't send anywhere because I already filled all the buildings or I have some buildings empty because I didn't draft it uh, because my dice graduated because I will constantly go after the six, which is not the best thing if you draft a six that's really good that's really good because it means that uh, it will uh, graduate sooner it can go on a quest and uh, because uh, all the quests are done simultaneously and once there's even one torch on the quest that quest will be removed and the other one will bring you more points but it will be significantly harder to finish so you really want to do like two quests each turn and there are four turns in a game so you want to do two quests each turn if possible but it's really hard. It's really hard. It's manageable, but it's really hard. And that's why I like this game because it it makes you think, it makes you combine stuff in your head and makes you uh, really use your brain to figure out this little puzzle of yours and how you can do that, what can you do? And you are watching what others are doing. You are actually trying to watch what others are, others are doing. So if they are going for that quest, that means it is going to be discarded. Maybe I should go for it before it gets discarded. You know stuff like that overall i think guild academies is really high up in my ranking margraves is still my favorite this one rivals with shadow kingdoms of valeria just because they both have all tons of custom dice so i'm like i'm not sure my this one is newer so it might be like this one is a little bit higher but i think that's like the cult of the new in my head uh, shadow kingdoms is proven to be a great game i still have to play this one a little bit more to settle that second place for sure i i mean i explored it enough but uh, i think there's more to explore in this game so yeah that's my review of guild academies of valeria i constantly forget about names of the i'm everything is now because everything has valeria in its name and i just keep everything mashing up in my head but yeah check out guild academies of valeria if you like custom dice if you like all this dice manipulation stuff going on awesome awesome game i really loved it i really enjoyed it check it out valeria can't miss with the game and that is all i have to say about it thank you all for watching for subscribing for spending time with me for liking sharing commenting supporting me on patreon all of that i really i really appreciate it these are not just empty words i know i almost always at the end of the videos i say this but i really mean it thank you all for your support and uh until next time Pozdrav.